in fluids in motion that don't precipitate out and da 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 and shelf life of hand creams and God, you know, around this issue of cell. And cell, then, the manifest becomes unmanifest, quote, and then becomes manifest again. In sulfur, the opposite side, what is manifest goes into unmanifest, but it goes through our empty upward pointing triangle, which we know is fire. I have a cross which says, this is the thing right here. And then I have it, it attached to a fire triangle which says, well, this is the thing that's going away. And that's what happens in sulfur is that something becomes so intimate that it combusts and goes away. And what falls out of the sulfur is an ash. So the way I usually explain it is you want to make some soup. Or you want me to make some soup. So I make, so being a Polish guy, I get some potatoes and water and an onion. And I chop the potatoes up, I chop the onion up, I put them in water, I put them in a bowl, and I put them in front of me and say, there's your it's potato soup. <laughs> and you say, well, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> How is that soup? Well, it's potatoes and onions and water, like the soup. Well, oh, oh, <coughs> soup, yeah, okay. So what I have to do, I have to take some levity and fire and put the great alchemical principle, fire under the earth. When I put fire under the earth, I push the earth into water, the water into air, and the air into fire. Then I'm a technician. Prior to that, the fire is up above, earth is down below, no problem. As soon as I put fire under the earth, I become the master of the universe. So to speak. Because <laughs> then I am saying, I want to change the way this is operating. So when I do, when I put fire under the potato and the onion and the water, they begin to go through a cell process. They become smaller and smaller particles and start to go up into a levity state in the water. And I just keep that going until you can't tell what's onion and you can't tell what's potato anymore. And then I put that in front of you and you go, wow, that's great. Oh, thank you. Shoot. And then you taste it and you say, do you have any... Uh, because <laughs> I, I pushed it out of salt. So I have to add salt. And then I'm, then I'm happy again. I say, oh, you like that? Yeah, good. So here, let me make you some more. So I do it. And then, oh, you like it when it gets cooked like that? Oh, I'm just going to keep doing that. And I keep doing that, and I keep doing that. And then we go, and we have some tea, and we talk. And then suddenly, the potato and the onion have lost the levity force of the water and are now floating around the room. <laughs> I've burned the soup. And I've released the potato and the onion from their manifestation form and move them up into a combustion process where they are now floating around the room and you don't think it's strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a potato floating around the room. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, but it's lost something. It's lost its salt. It's floating around the room. But now I'm going to gather all that that's floating around the room. I have a filter I'm going to get in. And then I put that in water again. And out of what comes out of the filter, 
will be the salt that originally drove the potato and the onion in the growth process we call potassium carbonate. That attracted the life. That, if you're into soil science, that's the whole ball of wax, CDC. So, so that process of going from gravity to levity in cooking is the fundamental alchemical process of making medicines or making the preparations. It's leading things from a gravity state into a levity state, which also includes fermenting. It also includes microbes and things that change the way the population and they aid in the fermenting. They are a kind of levity force because they bring life and they start to combust the sugars and proteins, and they are a kind of combustion process, these microbes. Okay, and when that happens, so what I've described to you, cooking the potato soup, is what we could call mercury. Because in mercury, there's a rhythmic counterplay between cell and sulf. So if I look at the symbol, if I wanted to meditate these symbols, I could meditate the cell symbol by inwardly drawing it. I could meditate the soft symbol and feel this kind of separation. The separation is when the ash falls out of the fire. That's what that's the picture of. Triangles of fire. And the cross is, here is a piece of something that's fallen out of a fire. Alchemists call that ash. But they understood in the ash, it's hidden the salt that attracted the life. And the mercury has the cross below from the fallenness of the earth, but also has the circle of the cell. And it goes up into levity state, and the mercury has a little half circle up above, meaning I can go up even beyond just the normal levity state into the realm where you can't quite follow me. And then I come back down, I'm sort of in your cell thing, and I am the ash, and I go back and forth. So the mercury moves back and forth. The mercury is the rhythm of the timing of a fever curve or a ferment, or anything that, a uh, process that goes through time is called mercury. <clears throat> and mercury was the great healer. But mercury brings cell and salt into contact with each other in a rhythmic sequence that is not linear, but is algorithmic. Boom, 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 boom. Drop a basketball on the floor and you are beginning to study algorithm. Listen to Bach. process of life, of the big going to the small that are somehow connected to each other in the same way, that is mercury. Expansion and contraction in larger and smaller ways. This is the growth of a plant from big leaves to small leaves and expand to the flower and then small. So anytime you take a, you could take a plant out of a seed and grow it in your mind, that's mercury. That's a meditation. So if you're trying to understand a particular medicament, you take whatever the becoming of the medicament is as a process, and you imagine the process that you're going through. Imagine the plant growing up to the flower, and then you take it back down, and then up to the flower, and then you take it back down. 
You take a mineral, how does a mineral form? Is it a Brazil twin and its molecular structure? How the, are the tetrahedrons forming? Da, 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 all that stuff if you're into that. And you picture it. Picture it becoming and then back again. And then becoming and then back again. That's Mercury. That's the stirring of the preps, is Mercury. The spraying of the preps in a particular time frame having to do with the moon, Mercury. A fermenting of something through time. A fever curve through time. Anything that moves through time that has a kind of algorithmic flow to it is Mercury. <coughs> The difference between a rhythm and a beat. A beat is always the same, will always be the same, and never changes. A rhythm is plastic. That's Mercury. Plasticity heals. Flexibility heals. It brings um, inflammation and sclerosis into contact with each other. Steiner makes the statement, inflammation and sclerosis are healing until they become chronic. And when they become chronic, they become cell or self. Inflammation, self. Sclerosis, cell. They are healing. Tumor formation after an inflammation is just called a scab. Great. Until the scab forms inside my arteries. <laughs> Those processes of cell and self could also be inflammation and sclerosis if you're a medical person. As a meditation, how does a wound heal? You know, this goes down into the level of macrophage and killer T cell and spleen, da 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 da, fine of spleen relationships. It, it's organology. It's, once you, once you build a kind of repertoire of the imaginations here, you can apply that to anything. People ask me all the time, how do you remember all this stuff? And the answer is, I don't. It's these, that little wheel that I showed you, I've just used it for 40 years, and I can read the most complicated medical texts and throw out all the jargon and get the picture. Because the pictures are all the same. Whether it's uh, cow manure or the function of the liver, they're, they're harmonic. They're, they're harmonic to each other. So that's what I'm trying to share with you, that Steiner got those imaginations for, for the beating preps from the beings who made them and said, well, how, if I took this and connected that to this, what would happen? And then we call it preparation 500. Well, you take what is on the front end and you kind of hook it up with what's on the back end and you get synergy. In the old days, that's called alpha and omega, one of the greatest alchemical processes. And people go, well, it seems weird putting poop in a horn. Yeah, until you understand that it's not weird at all. It is incredibly wise. It just appears weird because you think they're very separate things. But the cow doesn't think they're separate things. <laughs> the cow just says, this is just what happens. I receive the forces of digestion through the horn, and you receive the forces of digestion through the poop. Got a problem with that? Okay, so we went from earth, water, air, fire to sound, self, mercury. The four great processes, and the three great processes, and the four elements. 
When I want to go from earth to water, very often it goes from sal to salt and back again. When I go from water to air, it goes from sal to salt and back again. 